my name is Becky and this is a hand knit letter. A show and tell of the things I want to make and the things I've made. No, I usually say the things I've made and the things I want to make. <laughs> Gotta say it the right way, otherwise the whole episode is going to be turned upside down. It's probably going to be turned upside down anyway because I'm not wearing glasses right now and me mom needs glasses. <laughs> but I put them on and the glare is just out of this world today. So um, I thought I would try my best show one and tell it with my eyes all squinted. Um, but so bear with me. <laughs> uh, usually I start the episode by saying what I'm wearing. So I am wearing the Camp Pullover by Amy Christoffers. It is a pattern um, uh, for a top-down raglan construction sweater. There's some eyelet details in, in the raglan shaping. It's just a straightforward, simple, easy-peasy pattern. I knit this um, when Casey of Young Folk Knits was hosting her bougie sweatshirt knit along. And so this is my bougie sweatshirt. I, knis I knit it in, um, I knit it, <laughs> I knit it in Cascade Cantata, which is a cotton and merino yarn. And this I believe is in the color pine. And I really do love this. It's very, very soft, very comfortable, not scratchy. Um, it does pill a little bit, but I've worn it many times. So, I mean, I don't think it's a bad amount of pilling. It's probably normal for the amount I've worn it. Um, basically, because it's a blown yarn, it's a cotton core with um, merino fibers blown in. So I think that is a little more fuzzy, so it pills a little bit more than your standard, you know, not blown yarn. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Last time since the last time that I talked to you, I was still working on my uh, vest the Andrea Mowry's tessellated vest that was her Rhinebeck pattern um, that she released for everyone to kind of make and wear at Rhinebeck and I finished it. Um, you may have seen that in my Rhinebeck recap video, but if you haven't seen it, I I got you covered. I got it with me. Um, so here it is. This is the tessellated vest by Andrea Mowry. And I'm gonna bring it in a little bit closer for you to see. And I really do like the fit. I knit it according to the pattern. I didn't make any modifications other than I did not do um, tubular cast on and bind off. I just did normal uh, cast. I just a long tail cast on and then I just bound off in pattern in the ribbing. <clears throat> so uh, what I used in this, I used Quince & Co. Chickadee in Peacoat as the navy. I used the Fiber Company Ciro in Angelic for my little white fluffy bits right here. And then my variegated yarn was Spin Cycle Castaway. And I really enjoyed wearing it. It was fun to meet up with everybody um, and see all the variations of this pattern. It just is, it's amazing to see the creativity that comes out of um, makers even when they're making the same pattern. So it was it was really cool. I saw so many um, vests and sweaters that I wish I could have featured all in my videos because they were just amazing. So uh, I'm sure a lot of people have that on their Instagram or on their um, Ravelry. So if you just check out Tessellated Vest or Tessellated Pullover, you could see all the beautiful makes. So yeah, that's my first finished object. My second finished object is the baby sweater that I should have mailed by now. <laughs> This baby might be like way grown out. I don't think so. She was just born the end of September. So I think it'll be, I think we're cool. This is the hyphen cardigan or, or just, yeah, hyphen cardigan by Lisa. I don't know how to say it. It's either Chemery or Shimmery or neither of those. Um, but I will put it in the description box down below so you can find it. It's just a simple top down cardigan with some details in the yoke. And on the um, on the cuffs, and I knit this out of a knit no, not knit picks, Hobby Lobby, <laughs> Hobby Lobby yarn bee. I want to say this was in the color soft shell. I will also put that yarn down below. This took one skein. This was the three month, the zero to three month size. In my gauge in this pattern, I feel like this is more of the three to six month size. So. I mean, it's 
it's subjective, <laughs> but that's how I feel about that. And I've knit this before and I felt that it was on the bigger size, even though I hit, I did hit gauge for sure on, with the first time I knit this, I might be a little bit off on this one. Um, but yeah, it's adorable. I put some, not wood buttons, they look like wood buttons, but they're little plastic buttons that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I just thought this would be simple for the parents to clean and care for, and they also didn't have to fuss over it. So that was my choice for this. So I should mail this soon, very soon, like tomorrow. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> oh, I better get what I'm working on. I gotta get my whips. Hold on one second. I'm back. Got my whips. All right, so the first thing I'm working on is a test knit for Samantha Guerin. And she said I could show it to you guys, um, or you all, because I realize you're not all guys, but it's a habit, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I could show it to you all. It's a lovely textured shawl. I love it. I'm enjoying every second of it. I am knitting this out of um, Dragon Horde Yarn, Dragon Horn, <laughs> Dragon Horde Yarn in the color the raven is a fingering base um, that's the main color and the colors that are in here are, um, is spin cycle malolo wololo <laughs> it's a wololo i i when i say wololo i always, for some reason i think of malala and then i want to say malolo <laughs> but it's wololo and um it's fading from a Let's see here real dark eggplant purpley brown and then we've got well, we're going up to some reds here and then we're fading back to browns and this is the color it's going to start fading into this and that color by dragon horde is a real deep a real deep teal but like a blackish teal so that's the color for the main um this is a test knit like i said before for samantha garen and i'm loving every second of it um it's perfect for your one special skein like fingering weight yarn and you can mix it with minis with hand spun with um like a color changing yarn like the spin cycle or i know um Cascade makes one, a color changing yarn, and I don't know if it's Schopel or Schockenmeyer or I don't know. <laughs> they make one, so you don't have to go the expensive route for that. The fact that you could also use scrap yarns as your, as these um, these little color portions, you could use, um, here, this is the right side. You could use scrap yarns in here and change it all up. It's just a really cool pattern um, to stash dive and see what you got in your closet or use up those advent calendars that people get um, that are full of minis. It would be perfect for that. And this is gonna be coming out, I believe the end of November, beginning of December. So keep your eye out on that. I will share the finish shawl in the pod in, whenever it comes out, I will share the finish shawl in my podcast because, because Samantha said I could share it, but not the finish, the full finish thing until it's released. So stay tuned for that. I know you guys are, I know you all <laughs> are going to want to take a look at this because it is, um, like I said, a good way to use up your stash, but it's also very relaxing. It's a very relaxing, intuitive knit. Um, and I'm enjoying every second. I'm not, um, trying to, but it has a deadline because it's a test knit, obviously, but, um, I'm not like, oh, I wanna get this done. I need to get this over with. It's just, it's very, very enjoyable. And it's a good knit that you could um, talk to people, you could have conversations, you could watch TV. It's just perfect. Really enjoying it. And I know that you, you all will do, do so too. We'll also, you guys, <laughs> you will like it. <laughs> I'm having brain farts. Okay, so that's whip number one. My second whip, this is pretty much the only thing I'm really working on right now. I have a hat on the back burner. Um, this is the Lone Skein shawl by Hohi Locatelli. I think I've showed it 
maybe like an episode two or three. Haven't got that far on it. Um, it's got a really pretty stitch pattern. Very beautiful. This is perfect also for your special skeins. I don't know if you can really see that stitch pattern. It has short rows, um, kind of like a wave that's going in and out. This pretty uh, pattern throughout it, it's, it's gorgeous. I love it. I'm gonna really enjoy wearing this, I think. This is the Mano Still Uruguay in the color Sealing Wax, and um, it knits up so soft and lovely. It's, it's lovely. I, I first hated this yarn because uh, winding it was an experience, <laughs> but knitting with it is a joy. So I think you take the bad with the good in this case. So that's all my actual current whips that I'm working on. I have a lot of plans and um, I'm gonna show and tell those. So here we go. Let's go for stuff I wanna make. So in stuff I want to make, sorry for the crinkle, um, Casey of Young Folk Knits and uh, Ashley of Design by So-and-So are hosting a knit along um, called I Can Buy My F I Can Buy Myself I Can Buy Myself Flowers <laughs> Knit Along or Cal. And it is the different um, press fla pressed flowers patterns by Amy Christoffers. So um, there's a cardigan, there's a pullover, there's a shawl, a hat, socks, and a cowl. So pretty much choose your own adventure there because <laughs> there's a lot of them. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit the hat. And I have a leftover skein of Quince & Co. Um, Chickadee. I know it says honey, even though I can't read it. <laughs> this is Quince & Co. Chickadee in the color honey. I knit a shawl by Tiffany Lynn with this. and I had one full skein left. So I have this and then I have a skein by Little Lion Head Knits. I will put my glasses on and I will put it in the description box. I cannot read the color, but it's really pretty creamy white with different variegated colors in it. And I thought these two would look really good together for the pressed flowers hat. This will be the main color and this will be the flowers and the little um, slip stitch squares will be in this color. So I'm gonna, it has a really cool, look at that grungy green right there. I love that. Um, so this will be really pretty together. So um, after this, after I finish my test knit, I'm going to cake these up and start it, and I will share that with you. And okay, more, more stuff I wanna make. So another knit along <laughs> is uh, from Leanne of the Knitty Stew. I know most of you guys know her too. Um, and she is having a knit along for Caitlin Hunter's halibut patterns. There is a cowl, a hat, and a pullover in the halibut. Um, patterns and Leanne is calling her knit along I think it's for the halibut for the halibut cow I will also put that in the description box but it's full of amazing fishy puns and lovely dad jokes in the comments <laughs> it's fantastic I'm here for that you know how much I love dad jokes and puns well if you don't know I'm telling you now I love it I'm all over it. It reminds me of my dad who was the king of, he was the king of dad jokes and puns. So I love all that. It makes me think of my dad. Okay, so back on track. The cowl. For the halibut cowl, I'm going to make the cowl, a cowl for a cowl. I am using nightshades. Um, this one is like the blue tinted one. I also will put the actual name of it in the description box below. And then this is Pearl Soho Goodwill, Good Wool. And I will also put the name of that below. <laughs> oh, who would think that you would need your glasses to read? Okay, so this is like a gray, like a, a gray with a lot of brown in it 
but it's a, it's a gray nonetheless. And these two together, I think will be super cool in the halibut cowl. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to love it. I will want to make, I do want to make the pullover in the future. Um, but not for the cow. I'll just make it some for other time. the knit along with Leanne, I'm going to make the cow and I think it's going to be great. I thought I would talk a little bit about, um, my weekend in New York, just a tiny bit. I shared a video already. I'm not going to bore everyone with the whole Rhinebeck beginning to end <laughs> adventure. Um, but I just want to say I had a great time. Um, I went with my husband and um, Casey and her husband and we had a great time up in New York ate some good food met a lot of wonderful people um, I, I got uh, inspired by all the creativity so my knitting mojo is full force <laughs> so that was fun um, I know everyone has heard all the crazy tales of wool and folk and in my experience it was it was pretty accurate, <laughs> the things I've heard from others. Um, the only thing that I, I, I guess I don't really wanna say anything about it other than that. It was accurate. <laughs> okay, but I had a great time meeting everybody. The, so seeing people there was was the best. I'm gonna share a few things that I, um, that I got while I was up there. I didn't go crazy shopping because um, I just had a carry-on luggage and I did that intentionally so I didn't go crazy shopping. I just mostly wanted to see different yarns in person and feel them and so that I would know what I want in the future. And I do have quite a few things that um, that I that I do want to get in the future for a future makes. But I'll just share with a few things that I did manage to pick up when I was there. So while I was at Woolen Folk, I stopped by the most adorable adorable booth by Fiber MacGyver and it was set up in um, like a little vintage camper. It was absolutely adorable and I can't, the name, the camper has a name. I can't remember it but it was, I remember thinking that's cute. <laughs> so just know it was a cute name in the camp. So I was at the booth. I got to meet Mary Beth who I knew from Instagram and um, she was working there and um, she was showing me all the different yarns that are available were available at the booth. And then this one um, is named after her. This one's called Shaddix. And um, it is just the most beautiful, rusty orange, but it's just, it, it glows almost. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I picked that up because not only did I like the color a lot, but I love the fact that it was Mary Beth's color. And um, I also picked up the equivalent um, in Surrey Silk. So these two together by Fiber MacGyver, I am going to knit up a Chesley toque for myself. I've knit many for others, but this one's gonna be for me. And I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. <laughs> anyway, I love it. It's beautiful. If you're looking for like a glowing kind of embery looking. This what that, that's what this looks like. It looks like glowing coals type of that kind of orangey glow. It's just really pretty. I don't think it can come across on the screen as beautiful as it is, but it really is beautiful. So I think it's just the perfect color. <laughs> and I was also able to stop by the um, Le Garçon uh, booth there and I picked up two skeins of their British Sport, I believe. British Sport. Colors will be in the description because these are even smaller than like, um, you know, like the over-the-counter drugs and they have like the, um, show you how to take it, the directions, and you're just like, whoa, that's even smaller than that. And I usually have to, even with my glasses, I will have to take a picture with my phone of the directions of the pill bottle or whatever. And then I'll have to look at my photos and blow up the picture <laughs> like that in order to see it. This is even smaller than that. It's crazy small, but it is crazy beautiful at the same time. So I got two skeins, a kind of like a pine forest green color, and then like a, like a moody sage that is in the same family as this. So I thought 
look really good together, maybe like in a color work sweater, like an oatmeal as the base color, and this is the color work, I think it will look really cool. And I know that um, Max the Knitter or Maxim Sear has a new pattern that is coming out soon. I think it's in like a line of book or a, something like that. It's in some kind of book that's coming out. And it has, I think, four colors or five colors. I'm kind of thinking maybe I need to use these two in that and then pick up two or three other colors. That would be amazing. So I will also put the colors down below for these. <clears throat> okay, and then I got, we went to, when we were up there in Rhinebeck in Kingston, we went to a adorable yarn shop and the only thing I picked up there was a, um, I've never seen this before, but it's like a leather handle that is um, a Japanese inspired type of thing where you can make any kind of bag that you want. Here's a picture of the bag. And so what you do with this leather handle is inside it has these little openings right here. And you tie a square of fabric could be any kind of size that you want and you tie it shows you the instructions in here on how to tie that into the handle where you make your own bag or purse with these leather handles I think that's so cool so I will report back I will make one and show it sometime soon on the podcast and show you how I like it but I thought that was really neat it's from the brand Miyako I think but it's really, really cool. So that was one of my purchases. I'm never gonna do no glasses again, because <laughs> it's bad. So at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, I didn't pick up a ton of things there either, um, but I stopped by a booth that had different um, handmade goods by women in, I believe, Guatemala. And this was one of them. This is the cutest <laughs> little sloth. Oh my goodness, can you just, you just wanna squeal, don't you? <laughs> Cause I do too. <laughs> He's just so cute. Anyway, they had him hanging from a branch and I just fell in, look at his little nose. I just fell in love with him and I knew that my son would love him. So I got this for my son and he does love him, but I told him I would give it to him fully give it to him after the podcast. <laughs> so there he is. I got that there. And then same booth. I picked up a pair of earrings for my daughter-in-law. Really pretty handmade. Um, they look like, it's like, looks like it's woven metal, but um, absolutely beautiful earrings I picked up for her. And then the last two things that I purchased was from the button lady. I don't remember her name. I just called her the button lady. And um, she, I know she has like, a, she does a lot of shows. I think she's going to um, the Middle Tennessee Fiber Fest in March. She'll be there. But she has all these vintage buttons, like amazing buttons. And the ones I got, um, she told me were over 150 years old. So this is the first set. And it, I don't know if you guys can see, or you all can see the iridescence in that. It's just super cool. So I got those. And then the second set I got is my favorite. Um, it has like a, almost like a checkered or a textured pattern in them. And I got these for Cardigan and Pearl Soho was having a 25% off sale recently. And so I got the Goodwill card, uh, the Goodwill in the color walking stick. And I thought these buttons would look amazing in a cardigan. And so I think I'm going to make, um, I'm going to cast this on, I believe after I get um, my, my shawl test knit done, but these are so pretty. I love these so much. They're really, really cool. I hope you guys can see the details in the, um, in the screen. 
So yeah, that's pretty much everything I bought. When I was at um, Brian Beck, I got to meet so many people. Um, I can't even, can't even recount how many uh, lovely people. Um, one of them was Ophelia, and she has a podcast too um, called Orchid's Heart, and she makes adorable stitch markers, and um, she's just a beautiful knitter and maker and crafter. Um, I know she sells these sometimes, but she um, gifted this uh, set to me, and then a set to Casey. It has a moth on it and um, stars. It's really beautiful. Um, but check out her her Instagram. I think it's Orchid's Heart as well on Instagram. Sometimes she'll show she'll tell you when she has um, stitch markers and notions uh, for sale. But they're really, really pretty. And check out her podcast too. She makes some lovely things. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all I have to show and all I have to tell for today. I hope um, this video finds you well. And um, thank you for joining me and spending your time with me. And until next time, happy knitting. Hey. Also, I wanted to say real quick, I forgot to mention it in the video, that the lovely guitar music that you hear at the beginning at the end of my video was given to me and played by my son, Will. He composed that and said I could use it in my videos. Thank you, Will.